Hi guys, Matt Easton here. So, uh, one of my viewers, Morgoth Balgley, I hope I pronounced your, uh, your name correctly, asked me a question which I thought I'd just, uh, I responded to it on, in the comments under my video, but I thought I'd just shoot a short video uh, to actually talk about the topic as well. Uh, and he actually asked me, in an unarmoured fight, would I rather have a Bowie knife or a rondel dagger. This is actually a bollock dagger, but the uh, blade is the same as you'd find on a rondel dagger. Um, just to, for those who don't know, the dagger blade, the medieval type of dagger blade used in the 14th and 15th century, is very much a dedicated thruster. That's not to say that it doesn't have an edge on it. It does have an edge, but the edge is not really there to chop or even really to slice with, it's potentially the edge is really there to make other people grabbing it a little bit more difficult, but also potentially as we see in Paulus Cal um, uh, treatise where he's actually fighting with a guy on the ground and he's actually using the rumble dagger edge to kind of slice through the armoured opponent's straps of his armour to basically pull off a piece of armour so he can then stab into it, either ice pick grip or, or um, hammer sort of hammer grip. Um, so the question is, which would I rather have in an unarmoured fight? And generally speaking, my answer is, I would rather have the Bowie knife. Not a big surprise, because of course the Bowie knife is a type of knife, actually there were knives in the medieval period that looked pretty much like a Bowie knife, that was designed for unarmoured fighting. The whole point of this type of very thick and relatively narrow blade is that it can compromise armour, it can get through mail, it can get through gambesons and it can get into gaps in armour as well. Um, so it's really kind of like a sharp bar, um, very good at punching its way into things. So this is, you could say, in a way this is more versatile because this, obviously if I stabbed someone in an unarmoured fight with this, it would work, it would stab someone, it would be a very useful stabbing implement. However, if we're only fighting in an unarmoured environment, then you could say that this really actually offers more advantage because I can stab just as well as I can with this, both of them are going to stab, um, but in actual fact this would actually, the Bowie knife, would actually create a bigger entry wound and therefore more bloody, more blood loss, internal, external, more damage. So this, against an unarmoured opponent, does more damage to their body, but is probably harder to get in. This will go in more easily, and therefore this is very good for getting through armour, through resistive things. But if you're stabbing someone who's just wearing normal clothes, then a big broad blade is going to do more damage. However, if I try and stab this through a gambeson, I will most likely fail, and it's definitely not going to get through male armour at all. Uh, this will not get through male, and um, it will not get through... well, I'll, I'll qualify that statement you would have to be really, really lucky against a resisting opponent to be able to compromise male with a bowie knife. Um, whereas with this, relatively easily actually, because that much of the blade pretty much, about an inch of the blade will go through without having to compromise the male. It will just pass through the hull and only at that point will it then burst one of the rings and keep on going. This blade just generally speaking won't do that. Um, and even against a gambeson, um, this is not going to be very good, either in cutting or in thrusting, it's not going to do an awful lot. So in that sense, you could say that the, the medieval kind of rondel or bollock dagger type blade, the very stiff, thick blade, is more versatile because you can use it both against unarmoured opponents and armoured opponents. This, you can only really use against unarmoured opponents, but if you're only considering unarmoured opponents, then this is a more versatile knife. Again, my favourite word, context, because of course this can be used to thrust, to, uh, to chop, to slice, all sorts of things. Um, so in an unarmoured fight, if I'm certain it's going to be an unarmoured fight, then of course I would choose the Bowie knife. However, if you're in a medieval world, if you're in a medieval context, you can't ensure that it's going to be an unarmoured fight. Your opponent might just have a gambeson on, and if they've got a gambeson on, this Bowie knife ceases to be so good, ceases to be so useful, and you may actually prefer this. Because remember with this, a stab anywhere on their body stands a good chance of getting through a gambeson. With this, you stand very little chance of getting through a gambeson. So there we go. My favourite word, context again. Uh, in an unarmoured environment, yes I would pick this. However, you have to be absolutely certain it is an unarmoured environment. Um, otherwise, these kind of dagger blades are very, very useful. Okay guys, cheers.
And additionally, I will add, this is like an appendix to what I've just filmed, so the choice between a bowie knife and a, a dagger, a medieval dagger, for compromising armour, is not always, of course, that simple. In a medieval environment, if you think, OK, well, I want a blade that can stand a reasonable chance of getting through a gambeson or, or mail in the gaps between plate, uh, plate armour, but I want some of the ability to cut of the, of the, of the bowie knife, what do we end up with? Ta-da! We end up with things like this. Okay, you end up with things like the basilard or the chincadea, or these um, kind of what's sometimes known as a Holbein dagger, which is another type of basilard, the Swiss dagger, as it's sometimes called on the continent. Um, and that's why you end up with these types of blades in the medieval world, because there are some types of blades which combine some of the thrusting potential of the rondel dagger. So this blade is not as thick as the rondel dagger, but it does, it does have a relatively thick point reinforced at the point. Um, but it's still got some slashing and, and chopping ability with it as well. So there we go. It's not always a choice between one extreme, you know, the bowie knife at one extreme and the, the rondel dagger at the other end of the, the spectrum, but sometimes you have things in the middle which can kind of fulfil both purposes. There we go, guys. Bye.